welcome to another nature workshop. I'm Rachel, this is my family and we love the Exploring Nature with Children curriculum. This week, if you look in there, it's all about trees and specifically how trees can be a habitat for lots of different things. Do you know what a habitat is? Yeah. yeah. What's a habitat? Yes, a place where uh, animal is. Yes. And lots of different animals have lots of different Mom. habitats. Mom. They do Mom. and they sometimes adapt how... Bunnies how... have holes. Yeah. Bunnies do Bunnies. have holes. Yeah. Yeah. I... yeah. Like monkeys adapted with their tails. Yeah, they did. Yeah. And so different habitats are for different creatures and different living things. And sometimes they adapt as well to those habitats so they can survive the best. What makes somewhere a good habitat or a good home? What would make somewhere a good home or a good habitat? Should I tell you some of the things I thought of? Uh, a TV. A TV? A <laughs> I don't TV. think the caterpillars are bothered about TVs. But you would want somewhere that shelters you from the rain and the weather, that protects you maybe from predators, that has a good source of food to eat. TV? And probably not TV. That's not essential. So I was thinking, I was thinking about all of those things and that really those things that make somewhere a home are things that make you feel safe and safe in a reliable way so that you feel safe every time you're, that you're there. And you can trust that this is a safe place to be. So as we're going about today, you need a bed in your habitat, don't you? Yeah. yeah. As we're going about today, we're going to be thinking a little bit about the safety of home and of habitats, not just for animals, but also for creatures like us too. So we're off to show you one of our favourite trees that we've been watching for a while now. But I wanted to show you some different habitats, some different homes as we're going along because that's going to help us with our discussion this morning as we communicate to each other. So our park changed a little bit recently. And as you can see, we have some homes in our park because we had a big fair here and people who work on the fair live there too and travel around. So I guess the fair is their habitat in many ways and the place where they feel safest. But the problem that I was thinking about was when one hab person's habitat or creature's habitat impacts another person or creature's habitat. Because the tree that we're going to is probably a habitat for lots of different creatures, but it's been right next to this fair for the last couple of weeks. It's been quite loud, hasn't it? There'll be lots more people, a bit more litter, and that's going to impact the habitat of the living things. Yeah, when people are in the fair and they have lots of food and they might drop litter and so on. So, someone's home is impacting a creature's habitat. But everyone deserves a safe place and a home to live in. So, how do we figure that out? So, our favourite tree here is behind fences right now in the middle of a fair, which if I was living in that tree, I would not find a very pleasant experience, even though the fair can be a great place of fun for us. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of litter around as well, which can affect the habitat of creatures here. So some important questions to think about. What do we do when one habitat impacts another habitat? Who kind of wins in that? Is there ever a winner? Is there a way of compromising? How can different people and creatures live close to each other in a way that protects and looks after each other's habitats. Before I tell you the next question, I just wanted to show you another example of how the needs of two different groups can sometimes be in conflict with each other, can sometimes get in the way or hinder, remember that word from last week, can hinder each other. We've got a brand new park here that a lot of people are really excited about. A lot of money has been spent on it and it's now this lovely safe place for my children to play and be happy. We don't have a garden, so this is really kind of an extension of our home. But more children, more families means more impact on the trees around us, which are a habitat for lots of living things. Will the birds be affected? Will they want to put their nest there if it's going to be very loud over here? I don't know. 
it is a really tricky um, a really tricky thing to think about the next question then possibly a little bit easier is what makes you feel safe what makes your home feel a safe place to be a third question is about how we can make things safe for other people how can we make our village our city our town a safe place for new people how can we make our green areas a safe place for different living things So I'm sat beside another one of my favourite trees. I love the way that it, the bark looks, the colours of it, the shapes of it, the nooks and crannies inside it. I bet that's home for a lot of tiny creatures. So are you ready for a three, two, one challenge that's going to help us connect with nature a little bit and maybe even connect with other people too? So the three, two, one challenge today is three habitats. Can you find three habitats or homes? They could be large ones that have a lot of different creatures living in them. There could be a very specific habitat that is just for one special creature. So three habitats or three places of safety that you can find. Can you find two places that are being damaged or habitats that are being destroyed? Again, it could be something on a big level. It could be on a small level. So two places or habitats that are being destroyed or that aren't safe anymore for some people. What's interesting, you might find that some of the places you spot in the first one, three places of safety, might actually be the same as the two places that aren't safe for some creatures or people. And the last one, can you do one thing today that makes someone else feel safe, that makes them feel welcomed, makes them feel at home? So three habitats and places of safety, two habitats that aren't safe anymore or that are being d damaged or destroyed, and can you make one safe place or place of welcome for somebody else? Three, two, one, let's go. Because we saw the impact that litter had on the different habitats we saw, we decided to make an art project that used completely recycled or scrap material. We had a great time doing it and it meant that we had to think a little bit outside the box as we were creating, but we love the colourful picture that we ended up with. Next, we played a game all about habitats. This one from Twinkle was great because we got to discuss where creatures belong and if that changes over time. For example, a fox might be in woodland but might change to live in the city. Here are a few different projects that we've done before using trees as our resource in art. So we made little houses using lots of different found things on our nature walk and then we made little leaf people that could live in those houses. And that was a really great way to think about habitats in a bit more of an imaginative way. We also really liked exploring leaves by making our own prints. So we painted our own pattern on the leaf on the most textured side, flipped it over and used a roller to press that out and make a lot of repeating patterns as well. Another simple idea is using the things that you find in nature to apply the paint. So we did an abstract picture using pine needles, but you could try all sorts of different things. So if your grown up looks in the comments below, you'll be able to find a list of all sorts of different resources, lots of them free that you could use to explore the topic of trees and habitats. Other things that you can do then, like us, you can make some art with recycled materials. You can use leaves to make your pictures or stamp the leaf patterns. You can make your own magical habitat. That could be a den that you make outside or it could be a fairy garden, whatever you fancy. You can make your own game to test your knowledge about habitats as well. Thanks again so much for joining with us today and have lots of fun exploring. See you next week.